Okay, so now we'll go ahead and start. Well, hello, I'm really excited here. Life's Co-Pilot has got a chance to introduce uh, Elisa Hawkinson. And Elisa, you're from a little further west than, than we are here in, in Indianapolis. So, so way to Seattle. Seattle. So, so basically she's, she is, uh, has an organization called How to Get Organized. And I think you have books on that and everything else. We're gonna let you introduce yourself in a second. But basically she's gonna tell you some D, uh, DIY stuff on how to get your life under control, how to get your stuff in order and things like that. So so uh, with no further ado, we'll let you tell, tell us all who you are and about your business and we'll let's go from there. Thanks, Jim. I really appreciate that. This is a great opportunity. I'd love to help anybody who's interested. So really, I'll, I authored this book, Calming Your Chaos. Can you see that? Your, your background's killing. There you go. Okay. And so I can give you, I'll give you the last chapter in a minute, but my bet, the backstory is I'm the oldest of six girls, all born with talents and gifts, each one of us. Some were wonderful at cooking and others in sewing. And I was the doofus one that liked order. I liked the countertop cleaned off after dinner. And I got teased royally for that. I mean, it was like, I, it was a bad thing to have. So I was embarrassed. I liked order. I'm not OCD. I'd like a blood transfusion with that, but that'd be fun. <laughs> but, um, I hid the fact that I liked order. Someone saw slides in my home one time and they commented that my slides were in order and I was so embarrassed. And when I was 38, I found out that was a good thing to like order. And so that kind of set me on a new, on a new level. And then my son, my eighth grade son shared a virus with me that put me in bed for two years, literally. And wow. I, I was on the couch or the lawn chair or the sofa or the bed and I remember walking one day real, or to the side of the deck. I knew I was getting better. I was at the end of, nearing the end of two years. I went, Lord, what do I do for the rest of my life? My kids are going to, going to be going to college. I don't want to be an empty nester. So what should I do? That's simple a prayer. And almost all of the I heard, help people get organized. I thought, that's hilarious, but that'd be fun. And so I told my mother-in-law, she goes, Lisa, you need to write a book. Well, that resonated. <clears throat> so I couldn't sit up yet. I didn't have a computer. So my yellow tablet came out. I wrote down everything. This is how you do it. This is what, the way I do it. So follow me. Well, that's kind of an idiot thing to do because I started having clients. My very first client, I had to ask her if she saved you Band-Aids. <laughs> and she says, I'm not that bad. So I've gone on since 2000 to help a lot of people and realize my, my idea in the beginning was just a, a no brainer. I need to learn from them how to teach them. So I'm really good at, I don't, no claim to fame, but I love teaching and I, I'm able to teach people how to have a simpler life. And I've had people that I've helped one time, they moved two and three other times that don't need me because they know what I taught and it really works. <clears throat> so and I've worked with moms of multiples and uh, families, all, all ages, but I've seen the last couple of years be working with boomers and seniors. And so I have a whole new level of understanding working with them. So my key things are when I talked with a person the first time, I want to find out about their life, how long they lived in their home, how many children have they had, get a sense of their hobbies and just get to know them and where they're, what they're all about. And to find out their attitude on moving, are they downsizing or moving to a, a different location to just see what we're working with. And so once we get that place and they've earned, uh, they have my trust, I, I just make, make I want to make sure that they understand that we're going to be making some big changes in their houses. Won't we'll all be comfortable, but I'm going to change their house into a product to sell. And at first, that makes them very uncomfortable because they think their old furniture should stay there to show the house. Go, no, no, go look at some houses for sale, open houses, and see what they look like, and get an idea of what we're going to do with your house. Realtors love me. A lot of realtors call me in because I'm able to clear out homes so people can move or the homes can be sold. And we do it rather quickly. And I've learned that in 31 days, you really can get your house in the place to list in 30 days. And so just like you need a good blood pressure number or a good weight number or a good blood sugar number, I really encourage people to get to the place in their life where they could list their house in 30 days if they had to. How many changes have you gone through in your life? That's what amazes me. At 25, I had no idea what was ahead of me. I lived in 20 places, multiple states, 
a lot of different kitchens and oh so it makes a difference what you do with your stuff so i really encourage people to downsize themselves or right size and get to the place where you could list your house in 30 days i po hope i've said that enough that people are hearing that so you have to go through every shelf every closet every cabinet and see what you have that you need and use still not something you did 10 years ago and you have all the equipment for it, but you no longer have that hobby or interest. So let those things go. And letting go doesn't mean to throw it out. It could mean giving to your kids, uh, neighbors, relatives, whomever, but just let it go. That's the important part. Um, and then if they if you still use it, of course you can keep it, but make, make sure you have just the number you need. I have men who just claim to be such a chef, they need a dozen spatulas. Well, good grief. How many do you really need? I happen to know the woman with a world record on spatulas. She has 1,600 spatulas. I have no idea what she does with all those. But if it's not your hobby, your claim to fame, get things down to what you need and use. And be rough and hard on yourself, ruthless, audacious. And say, what do I need? How much square footage am I moving into? That's a big factor. See what they're, where they're going. Are they downsizing literally square foot? And that's, I'm able to help them have less stuff that way. And we'll go through the home and identify everything that's going to be taken, like one of the three beds, one of the four dressers. And we put mark that with tape so we know what we'll be leaving. And then in the house, I make an area or a room for things that are going to be given to family. Another area for what's going to be thrown away. And so it just helps people that are family and neighbors that are coming in to help will understand what each area is <clears throat> and depending on how long they're going to take to make this move i say make regular trips to your favorite thrift store and so it's really good to have a thrift store that has a mission that aligns with your heart like they help homeless people and then you go well, i want my stuff that just lives on my shelf to go to that thrift store to sell to help homeless people i have men who have finally agreed to do downsizing in their garage because i have a local thrift store that helps search and rescue dogs and guys go oh i want to do that i'll let go of six of my hammers now i mean it's just it's just motivating to give and share so you were blessed once by buying or giving these things so bless them by giving it away and i have literally sat at a traffic light going what else can i give my favorite thrift store and i thought about these charger plates i had and i went i haven't used them in 10 years so i went home and bagged them up took them to my favorite thrift store and it, it just becomes motivating to let go, let go. And people are always telling me how much better they feel once they've really gone through that process. <clears throat> so it's doable, but you have to be intentional. And so you make an appointment with yourself like you would to go to the doctor or a dentist. You don't break that appointment. You make an appointment for two or three days a week for one or two hours at a time. And you go through and you let go of what's really easy first. Well, I don't need 36 sets of salt and pepper shakers. I'll just take two. And so let the others go. So just be intentional about getting things down to what you need and use. Of course, a few beautiful things. I encourage people to have a theme when they move. So when someone walks into their new residence, they say, oh, I can see all your trips to Russia. Or, oh, you are sailing a lot in your life. It makes it fun to decorate with a theme. Um, or maybe you love flowers. and Every picture is about flowers. So it just helps. It puts parameters on your moving situation and helps you um, make better choices like well does that lamp fit with what i'm trying to do and it's like looks like it belongs in bordello not in my nautical location now so that's really encouraging to people um, so having that generous heart really helps i remember the first time i did major downsizing my husband and i were getting ready to sail to south america well boats can't handle a lot of things i had like a huge ceramic Santa Claus for Christmas. But I had a set of ceramic dish uh, cups that I got for my wedding in 69. Well, they were for my sister-in-law and they always went in the same location in the, in, when we moved in the kitchen cupboard. Well, I didn't use them for so long. I let, needed to let them go. So as my kids were getting ready to go to college and all their friends were coming around, I'd say, what do you need? And I made a, a gift place free gift place in, near my front door and kids were taking stuff all the time, cups and utensils and dishes and pots and pans. I didn't need any more for the sailing trip. It made it really fun. And I blessed a lot of people. 
So the key is to get yourself in that place where you could list your house in 30 days if you had to, because life just throws a curve at you way too often after 50. Health, family situations arise, and you just need to be in better shape to make a change. So get ready to make a shift. What questions so, do you have? So do your clients, are, are almost everyone you're working with, are they getting ready to sell a house or is it something that they just want to get control of their house? It used to be control, but now it's moving for some reason, moving into a senior living or assisted living, or they have already moved and their kids want the house sold. So I just have to clear out the house. That takes a lot less time, but um, yeah, so it's mainly for boomers and seniors right now. And I didn't intend to, to intend to do that, but just shifted that way. Okay. So that's what you're running into. And, and there's, there's so much emotion tied to that move. Oh, I know it. So I had a woman with a, her mother's dustpan for three years. I'm going, oh, good grief. I mean, I was not attached to it. I said, what are you going to do with it? Is it going to be a sconce? I mean, what are you going to do with this dustpan? To, in my mind, you use it or you let it go. And I can't tell people what to do, but I just challenge them. Like, is that really your mother? Or could you take a picture of it and let it go? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, we're, you know one of our businesses is we have a caring transition franchise where we help senior, predominantly seniors, not necessarily just, but predominantly seniors to downsize, declutter, estate sales, online options, moves, packs, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And so we're in this world a lot too. You know, we're dealing with yeah. that, that conversation. And one of the things that I think that part of the expectations are, well, I paid $10,000 for that dining room set, you know, in 1975 or whatever it was, you know, right. and- you know, the, the thing that I have to tell people is that you've enjoyed it all those years, okay? But additionally, people don't have dining room sets anymore. So it's it's, it's very difficult to get much out of those if you can get someone right. to buy them at all, okay, type thing. Right. And what we have done to kind of niche niche that out a little bit, you know, try to find a, a spot to really help people is so often it's, it's something that they love that's not going to fit in their new life. Okay. But it's been a identifier for them for quite some time or right. mom or dad is gone now. And every time the kids look, you know, think of them, they think of this particular hobby or this particular, you know, thing. So to discard it or what have you feels like you're dishonoring. Okay. Right. And right. so what we have Often, and you know, I try to explain to people. I go, this is more for intrinsic value than it is for, you know, financial value. In most cases, sometimes you you can do okay, but but normally, is we do a lot of online auctions where we pick out we're going to do thirty items or or thirty lots or forty lots or twenty lots or whatever it is, and then we pick those emotionally targeted items. Okay, and maybe some we think are going to potentially have some you know revenue upside for them or whatever but then we market those so that someone else who has that same passion finds them okay we yeah. just finished one up the other day and it was just and i and i've always kind of i've always warned my sellers the couple or the people that are moving about being there for the buyer pickup okay mm -hmm. because some We've always warned that, you know, get emotional, see things, leave their house and what have you. But we have had other people that have stayed and had an absolute ball, okay, because they got to meet the next person that has a passion. And this particular lady that we just did this for, she was so sweet. She has no children, so she's moving across the country to be near a niece and, and nephew. And, but she has had this beautiful collection of antiques and she can tell you that her great grandmother bought these in Europe and brought those over. And then her, and then her grandmother, you know, needle pointed the seat in this chair from the governor's off. You know, this was a, the chair of the governor, right. you know, in, in 1860. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so she has these stories. She has no room for them in her life in her new life, but the idea of anything just killed her. Okay. So we ran this sale. They didn't make a lot of money. That wasn't the point, okay? 
But she got to meet these people. One of them drove a, you know, two and a half hours to come to get these little, you know, end tables because, oh my God, these are right. the most amazing things ever. And every yeah. single one of them, she got to stand there and have these stories with, you know, and she told the story and they were, you know, if, you know, gushing on her with this. She was just absolutely elated. Okay. Well, there's value in that. You know, and, and it's like, so that's a yeah. lot of what we do is we help from an emotional, we help them give that thing that's got a passion to someone else that has that, shares that passion, you know? And so, uh, yeah, and we yeah. just kind of facilitate, you know, online to help people find each other, you know, but. Uh, I love that. So I've done something similar in that downsizing event for sailing. There were some dishes I couldn't take. So I had to give some things away. So when I gave them away, this came from Aunt Eve and she always made a certain recipe and the recipe was in the bowl. And so 15 years later, the gal that I gave it to said, you remember when Aunt Ethel, I thought you mean Aunt Eva. So, I mean, this story was staying with it. And those stories are just really highly valuable. They are. And it's like, you know, we had, you know, we've, how I got into this world anyway, is I ended up being the only sibling that stayed in the state. And so I had to downsize my in-laws, my parents, my, my uncle, and, you know, and yeah. live this life like, oh my God, you know, this is so overwhelming. And it's, it consumes your life. You know, you know, I, I remember yeah. my mom, my, my in-laws, they were an hour and a half away from us. And between being the sandwich generation of dealing with, um, kids and travel sports and kids and and school and all the stuff that goes along with that plus jobs plus them plus them their health declining it was a year and a half before we got that house cleaned out you know because yeah, yeah you know and it was just it was nightmare and then my parents they had a big farm they had a 52 by 74 tool shed that was full of stuff you know and then dad actually had a u-haul truck that he bought never ran but it was where he put the good stuff okay you know in this in this yeah. box truck yeah. so my son and i we were the ones that were tasked to get this cleaned out we had 60 days and the first three days the first three nights we went up there and we wandered around and looked in every nook and cranny picked things up looked at it and then walked through the, every single place and ended up on the back porch smoking a cigar, drinking a bourbon, watching the sunset, not doing a single solitary thing because we were so yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah. We just didn't even know where to start. And finally, on day four, we said, okay, we're starting here, you know, and, 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 wow. and busted it for 60 days, you know. And oh, man. But, but people don't realize, and I guess the average family, I, I've heard this statistic, the average family that's cleaning out mom or dad's house takes nine months wow i had not heard that average but the average home has over three hundred thousand items and if they've been lived very long in that home they have even more they've had hobbies and recreational things kids have store their stuff there it's that's horrible and that's why i also i i guilt people i just be a blessing to your kids don't let them have to go through all that stuff find their dried out shriveled up umbilical cord and envelope you know don't let right. your kids find now, let them go, go away from that time going, well, I'm so glad mom and dad took care of all that stuff. We didn't have to take time off work or vacation time to do it. And that's, and I say, until you have your last breath, you're an adult, take care of your stuff. Well, you know, and the thing is, it, a lot of times that move is a very stressful move. It's a move that yes. the senior is either being forced to because of physical you know, limitations Right. They don't really necessarily want to, but they have to type thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then, or they, or they, they've passed or, you know, and, and all of a sudden the kids have to deal with it. Again, if you could have that not be one more thing they have to deal with while they're dealing with all that other emotional stuff, it's, it's a, right. it's a huge plus, you know, so. That's a message we really need to get out to people that are 60, 65 plus take care of your stuff. Think about your family having to go through all this or siblings or some churches have had to take care of people in their congregation because there's no, there are no relatives. Well, it's like, you know, we had a, uh, in our house because of all the downsizing or whatever, right. everybody kept giving us their China and we're like, we, we don't <laughs> use China. Okay. We've never right. used China. That's not who we are. Okay. Right. And right. I'm not going to want to hand wash it, you know, you know, whatever. So we had three sets of China in the garage and boxes for at least 15, 20 years. And finally, oh do, doing this, 
I see everybody else's stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this stuff's got to go. And so we end up, you know, like I think, you know, Facebook Marketplace or next door or something, and we sold them. And what people a lot of times, you know, one of them was my mother in law's 12 serving set, you know, high end Japanese China with every little boat and thing that goes with it. Probably was used once, you know, it was pristine. And we got $40 for it. <coughs> and I was thrilled that it went to somebody that wants it. Okay. And so that was the, the good news. My grandmother's, I almost was tempted to, my great grandmother's, I was tempted to try to keep it, but I was like, yeah, I'm not going to wash it. And it, yeah. um, and I sold it for $35, you know, so that time, yeah. ago, you know, so the crystal that was, that matched the 12 serving set with my, my mother-in-law, yeah. I was hoping it might have some value because it was mid-century modern and right. that's a, that changes the dynamics right so i had it on the market it was a 12 serving three piece per serve so 36 pieces of this bamboo etched crystal i put it on the market 150 dollars. a year and a half later i sold it for 10 oh my gosh well what i like to do with those things is give it to places <coughs> where women starting over they can split up 12 piece sets yeah each six or whatever so there's a home for those things but yeah, it's just so hard for people now to realize there's the value in their stuff is just not there, and the young people don't want it. Well, that's the other part too is that, that I've been trying to tell people is what we try when we come in to try to do you know let's pick the things that you have an emotional attachment to or have potential value and let's yeah. see what we can do with those. We'll come in and we'll clean the rest of it out. You know, here's what I can do to get you. Just we'll walk in and you walk out as broom swept. It's done. But let's. Right honor these things okay uh -huh. and whereas i see people do this all the time and it's just drives me crazy because you know all you see them everywhere storage units people will yeah. go in and they'll take all these things and they just can't give away because my gosh we paid a lot of money for these and they're worth a lot of money and you know i'm not giving them away so they right. get they put them in storage my mom has a storage unit i'm in this business but my mom has a storage room the value of the stuff in her storage unit probably is in or around one month's rent. Okay. Right. right. She's had it now for five years. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, there is no value to this stuff, but it makes her feel good. But my point is that's what we're trying to tell people. Let us come in and help us help you do that. Let yes. you come in and help, you know, find those places, those those uh, charitable places or whatever that can make yeah. you feel better about this thing be moving on to the next place. That's right. And I think that is what you said is feel good. And that, so it makes me feel good to share with somebody who can use it, who needs it. So I have two stories. stories. Um, I was talking with a woman one time. She's facing me. Her husband was behind her facing me. I said, and what's in your storage unit? And so she was, huh? Uh, dish towels and a couple. I said, you could take a trip to Alaska on a cruise once a year for what you're paying for storage. He goes, cha-ching, and really was happy I was talking to her about that. Another gal was in her mid-30s, single. She was an ethnicity that family guilted her to keep everything with grandma and uncle because someday she'd need it for herself. So she was paying for seven storage units dispersed around the city. I said, if and when you meet Mr. Wright, are you going to take him around and introduce him to all those buildings? I mean, it was just crazy what she was. She's never going to use all that stuff. No. And she's paying a lot of money. It's really I, having a reality check with family going, there's all this money going out. Let's keep what you love, love, love near you as much as possible. And I've had a grandma who wanted me to downsize and she wanted to give a, her grandkids a lot of stuff, but they didn't come around often enough. So I showed her how to text. So we took a picture and she texted them to her grandkids. She said, do you want this? If not, I'm giving it away by a certain date. Within a day, she, everybody had responded. She was thrilled. Yeah. And crazy. they didn't take most of it either. No, but what they did take, she was happy to know that they knew what was going on. Right. Well, it's like yeah, with the China or something we got rid of. I got a hold of our kids and I said, look, you know, <laughs> if you want yeah. it and do not feel guilted into taking it any way, right. shape or form. But I go... Before I give it to somebody else or get rid of it, don't come back to me and complain that you wanted it. You know, that's all it comes down to, you know. Right. You know so. 
when somebody needs things and you can you have it to give it just makes you feel so good my first husband passed away i was downsizing and my kids were at the age where they took almost everything i wanted to give away that was so fun my second husband passed away they don't want a thing they're at the age where they have everything they want and need thanks mom but pass it on so right. it's clear okay i'll find somebody else i just love blessing people with stuff yeah, and it's a, and getting it away from you know it just gets off of your shoulders. And we we just did a house for a lady, and this was a situation that our company couldn't really help her because it was such a mess that I couldn't. Well, I could have done a clean out that that I could have done. Okay, oh, but yeah. um, you know she uh, she just lost her husband. He was a hoarder, but he was a hoarder with exquisite taste. Okay, I mean he had, he had amazing things there uh but the house had come apart and then like there were water leaks and there was mold i mean as soon as you walk in the house it would start knocking you down with the mold so oh, we ended up we did move her we packed her and moved the stuff that she was going to move to be near her daughter in another state but i ended up finding a company that was coming in that took everything out took it to a warehouse and they're going to try to clean it and then try to do an auction on it because there were there was a massive collection of potentially a lot of money Okay, but it's yeah. but it was uh, I couldn't possibly have let people come into that house, right? You know because it wasn't yeah. safe, you know that type of thing. So, so but that's that's just it. You know, people get themselves in these situations, and and then I think it be it, it starts sitting on your shoulders like you give up. You know, you right. you don't believe that you can. I don't know if you ever get into truly hoarder situations. We do come across those occasionally so there that's a whole nother dynamic but it really is so i i came across one couple had passed away the older sister was the executor of the home and no one had been in the home for 40 years there was four inches above the top box the ceiling in one room it was just so packed it was like an archaeological dig oh this was a decade of photography this was a decade of ceramics you know and he had over 2,000 books in a room and they were just spilling off of the bookshelves. Well, having resources to help is so wonderful. So there's a Seattle bookman here. He came and hauled every hardback away. He sold them online and gave 10% to a clean water project. That was such a blessing to us to have him come in and haul it away. Right. But I just say, but I think that a lot of people now. I have a lot of people that won't let me in the house because they think they're hoarders, and I get there and go, "Oh no, no, you're not. You know, you're not even, you're not even in the same, you know, conversation. You know, but it's in their mind they are because it's right. gotten out of hand to them. You know, do you run into that or? So I impress upon. I do, and I say, they, I, they ward me off as we're talking. I say, look, I don't judge, I don't do that, but we might laugh. Is that okay? And so then I said, I don't think you can let me see anything I've not seen before. So let's just get to it. Well, that's good. Right? That's very good. So, so now how did you get yourself, you know, you've been doing things, we're aligning with these different charitable organizations. How did you, did you go out seeking them or how did you find them or? I think it's because I have my antenna up and I'm listening and looking and I ask questions like, who do you use for that? Or, you know, and I, I listened to them. I found another mover that I really liked. He has a really good attitude towards seniors. And I said, would you come into their home and move things around once they're in their place because they might decide they want things shuffled around? I was, oh, yeah, we'll do that, too. So I just love having resources are good with older people. Very good. So, you, you know, I will just give you a heads up. I mean, I'm sure there's caring transition franchises in your neighborhood. So you might want to talk to them yeah. as well. So because we do a lot of that kind of stuff. Well, with you said Dairy Queen? Caring Transitions. Oh, oh, Caring. Oh, I haven't heard that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there's 250 of those franchises across the country. So there's probably one near you. And they're trained to deal with seniors and the senior downsizing and all that kind of stuff, too. Nice. Yeah. It's just really hard. You, you can't bring reality to some people who are already starting to lose it. I had one lady moved into assisted living uh, unit and she had 40 pair of slacks. I could not convince her she didn't need 40 pair. It was beyond me. Right. I get it. You know, you're in or whatever it is, it's however many pots right. and pans or what have you. Now, one of the things that that we have learned to do to try to help people, a lot of times the kids want to help mom and dad. Yeah. Okay. And so they're really wanting to focus on 
what can we do? Well, you know, really let us do a lot of this stuff. Okay. That's what you're hiring us for. It's not to have to break your own back and, and get, get in so many fights. The mom and dad are doing these things. Let us help you with this. Right. But one of the things that I always recommend is go through, first of all, go through and anything that the family wants, by gosh, get that out right away. That, you know, make sure that the family gets, keeps what's family. And if you're on the question mark, you know, you know, hang on to it while you're making that question. But I go, then when, if they're moving from, say, a, a house that they've lived in for 40 years and they're moving into assisted living, what I always tell people to do is go into that new assisted living community and, and we can do it for them, but this is something the kids can do too. Measure how much cabinet space they have, how many shelves they have. You got this many. Now go back home and take your stuff out of the cabinets and, and reproduce those empty spaces. So I'm going to have six feet of cabinets in the new place or four feet or two feet or whatever it is. And I got 12 feet here. Now right. you can only take enough to fit into those new spaces. So this this is the space you've got to work from. Same thing in right. your closet. You go in, you you pull I out and that, say, yeah. I've got four feet of closet now, but I did have 22 feet. Well, now I got four feet. What's gonna fit in right. that four? And you, you put tape right. on the on the bars and then on the, the hanging thing, and then fit in your your new space, you know. So that can help you decide, does this blouse make it or does that blouse make it, you know, you know whatever, you know, so. That, that, that exactly. So that's true. One of the things my mom did that was so brilliant for 10 years before she got really unhealthy, every time we visited, we had to put our name on a sticker under something. I want that picture. I want that lamp. And so we had six girls in the family, as I said. So at the, some point I said, mom, you know, the girls have all put stickers on everything they want. There are things left that will probably sell where would you like the money to go? And so she was able to tell us that, which I thought was very honoring. Good. That's great. So, well, that's very good. So now how did you, when did you get into this business? When did you get in? When did you get in? In 2000, at the very end of my two year sickness and I merged into it and that just flew. And I just really, I did a lot of speaking engagements and one I did at a church, it was so fun. And near the end this woman in the second row stood up, she goes i have a barn and everybody understood okay we'll downsize put everything in her barn we'll sell it all all the money will go to the women's ministry that was just so cool awesome that's very cool so you just basically made a big sale barn yeah so and then i've been in speaking engagements a man heard me there and asked me to organize his wife's kitchen while she's on a three-day weekend and I went, oh my gosh. So I said yes. And it was an incredible view of the water of the lake, 180 degree view of the lake. Her countertops were perpendicular to the window that was not a normal kitchen. You had to go around the, to the back wall into a pantry. And so, and she was a short lady. Anyhow, I did a fabulous job, but I wasn't sure if I did that well enough. But he had me back the next year to do her craft room, her sewing room while she was gone. When I tell audiences I did that, all the women go, oh, like they would not want anyone to come into their kitchen and organize it, but I did it for her. It was just a fun story. So, so you started off doing it, that kind of stuff, going in and helping people get organized, and then you kind right. of morphed into it or the downsizing right. and getting rid of the houses and stuff. Is that because yeah. the realtors have figured out what you can do and then everyone's making the phone calls? or? Yeah, so that's what really what happens. So realtors are coming. Could you do this? They say, oh, well, yeah, okay. And then I did a big house and we did this huge job in 30 days. So that's why how I came up with the 30 days. If you press hard, you can get it done. You might need some help, but get to that place where you are comfortable with everything in your home. You love what you have. You know you need it and use it. And if you had to move in a couple of months, you could list your house. It makes life Very good. simple. So now your book, what is it? How, tell me about your book. What what What's the... Uh... Is it a do-it-yourself type thing, or how does it? Well, it is. It's kind of what everything we've talked about, but I have no more books. I have three left. They go to my grandkids. I just put it onto Amazon as an ebook. Oh, okay. So you do have it as an ebook? Yeah, for three ninety nine. So call me your chaos. Pardon me? Call me your chaos. Calming your chaos. Call me your chaos. And I'd be happy to send you two complimentary chapters you can share with anyone you like. And it's really how to organize any kitchen, any size, any configuration. 
and it works beautifully. You can use that same principle for your bathrooms, family room, every room of the house. Very and good. Garage, well, I have done garages for men after I've worked with their wife in the kitchen and around the house. He goes, okay, you can come in the garage now, but don't wreck my antique car. And so we get to it and we do it. And I did a garage for a man. Oh, it was unbelievable. He was a facility manager at a junior college and everything he saw was of great value. And it wasn't going anywhere but the dump. So he took it home. And I could not wedge a deck of cards anywhere. It was so tightly packed. And so he and his wife had a great conversation. They said, our goal is to have more time together. And so he wanted to clear out his garage. So she and I put a blue tarp on the driveway in the summertime. We said, okay, here's all your electrical stuff. What do you need for your last two, three projects? He was building a tiny house on his property. So he kept everything for his last three projects. We got rid of metal that he didn't need. We found junk he didn't need. We took all his white paint, threw it into one or two five gallon buckets. That was the only color white he had to use. Couldn't replace it. Um, but then we organized all his all his paints he had left when, when, when were gathered. Another good thing, put like things together. So all his paints were together. All his plumbing items were together. All his electrical stuff was together. So he could walk up to his workbench and do a project. When I started his workbench, I took a half gallon, what do you call it? The small, what do you call it? This very small coffee can. Yeah. I started putting pencils in it. I ended up with a gallon and a half of pencils in that garage. I mean, he just, he couldn't walk up to his bench to do any project. And that's a good goal to have. Not only to park your car in the garage, but be able to walk up to your workbench. Yeah, be able to have, basically get your life back because the stuff takes over. That's right. Oh, it's absolutely right. Yeah. So living a simpler life is a good goal. You don't have to be a millennial. You don't have to be a hoarder. Live, live a simpler life. No. So now do you do stuff? I mean, are you, um, do you ever do anything like where you coach people from, from afar? I have helped people in Alabama move out of state. So yes, I do a lot of phone coaching. We'd have, so really I become their accountability partner and they set intentions. And I hold their feet to the fire. We talk depending on their schedule, like every two weeks. And they say, but in that amount of time, I will do this, this, and this. And so I find out the next call, did you do it? And so then we have a list of what we're working on and it works beautifully. And at my age and ability, I'm getting to where I cannot do the big downsizing anymore. Yeah. I need yeah. a lot of help with that. So do you, uh, enjoyed... do you have them send you pictures of stuff so you can see what they're dealing with or how does that work? Yeah. It's be... so on YouTube or they can um, FaceTime, they can show me pictures in their house and I've done it even locally, the people been an hour away. And so they wanted to change their, apartment to look like a lakeside cottage and so I had was personally able to go through it with her we took notes all the way through so I knew exactly what we were doing but I can do that with FaceTime so it makes it fun yeah I know that you know again because of the fact that I do this for a living as well and so yeah. I'm in these houses and see stuff and don't want to you know and also the fact that we've downsized our our my in-laws my parents my uncle what have you it was amazing how often we would find things that they'd had forever, but they'd never used. They were saving for a special whatever, right. you know, and it was like we created a rule within our own house that if we like it, if it's something that means something to us, we have to display it. It has to be displayed. OK, it doesn't have to be displayed in such a manner that people other people get it or care about our our our, our decorating right. style but it's something that right. means something to us you know right. so um we've got a lot of shadow boxes where you know there's something in there that that we wanted to display or what have you if you look by wall behind me it kind of fills that you know there's a lot of that stuff back there you know so That's um good. but it's like rather than sticking it in a drawer or in a closet or in the garage that you'll never see you know, until the kids have to clean out the house, you know, if right. it means something to you, put it up, make it happen. We found, my wife found a, a whole bunch of, I don't know if this was a custom at the time or what have you, but when her parents moved from one city to another, in, in both in Indiana, but they were moving, 
a bunch of their friends gave them like cards, but inside the card was like uh, fancy ladies' hankies. Okay. <laughs> and there was a whole bunch of them. There was, you know, I mean, a, a whole bunch of these. And they'd never been taken out of the cards. The hankies were still brand new, pristine. They were from the, you know, 1959 or 60. And, and they were in there. So uh, what my wife did with them is she ended up making, she put them together and made a sconce for like uh, over our kitchen window and things like that, you know. So so there they are, They you know, but, but they, they have a, a purpose now rather than on the bottom of a drawer. Yeah. That's sweet. So I've got myself in trouble and corrected recently. I don't know why I kept baby teeth. What was I thinking? Uh, an ivory bracelet or what? So I was telling a group about that and the women were shaking their head like, oh yeah, I did that. And this one woman came up to me after she goes, you know, that's important to have those teeth because you never know when something horrible might happen and you need DNA. And I, oh my gosh, wasn't even thinking of that. <laughs> that's a little but morbid, gosh. yeah, but... You would not display an umbilical cord, you know, no. I mean, there's just, and then this may get you kicked off air, but I tell people, don't let your kids find your self-affection devices. I have run into that. And I just like, are you kidding me? That, that's probably not a good thing either. So, yeah. No, the worst thing I ever found, worst, worst, worst was a partially full porta potty under a table. Oh my gosh. That's what I did. I went, what do you do with this? You can't just throw in the dump truck. And I made phone calls, multiple phone calls. Finally, they told me to call someplace out of state. I said, I don't know why I'm calling you, but Wash Seattle told me to call you. And she said, sweetie, pour it down the toilet. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I cut a hole in a black garbage bag in the corner of it and held it open, had a guy pour it in there. I said, don't you dare let it get out of there. I could not believe, and then I was, then I could throw it away, but the guy I was working with said, Lisa, could I have that? Because I think I'm going to be living in a van. I'm like, oh God, I would never offer somebody a porta potty. A -potty. <laughs> the craziest things you run into, it's just unbelievable. It makes people laugh. Yeah, you do, you do see different things as you're out in these, out, in these houses. So when I say need used, I would talk about, how many cups do you need? There's a cabinet to the right of the sink or left. You usually have some mugs in there, right? I said, how many do you need? I said, eight, maybe 10, I don't know. The woman that's at this women's conference came up to me afterwards and she said, I have 56 mugs. I said, how often do 56 people show up? So we, I said, clean them, make sure they're clean, put them in a tub, put them far away so that when they show up, you have them. I mean, it just, and one couple want me to tell them if they should sell their house. I said, that's way above my pay grade. Let me look and see. They had a 30 year old house. Five kitchen cabinets were full of cottage cheese and butter, uh, butter tubs because they wouldn't be able to give leftovers to people when they left their house. I put all those on the dining room table. I said, look at all this room you have. I said, keep what you need and use. They kept three bowls for popcorn for their grandkids. And they, they didn't need to sell their house. They just had to clear it out. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like you know, a lot of people get to where things are so overflowing that it's not safe to be there, but they could age at home safely if they get the clutter off their floors and you know out of the places that they could function. Right. Almost yearly, somebody is found under the clutter. Have you read that? I had uh, no. They report a spouse missing and they find the spouse four days later under a pile of newspaper or magazines. Because things are stacked four or five feet high and you had to wedge through them. I mean, it's just crazy. I've been in those places and it's horrifying. Yeah, I my first experience with that, I was probably 16. And <laughs> um, there was a lady that lived across the street. This was out in the country, okay? But she lived across the road and down the road uh, from my grandmother. And my grandma was driving, her driveway was a quarter mile long. So it was, yeah, they were, it, you could see the lights from the house, but that was about it, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, it was winter night and she hadn't heard from her, hadn't seen her. So she was worried about her. And so she sent me over to check on her. So I get there and the back door was standing open, which was, you know, it was cold out. And I was like, you know, yeah. so I was worried. And then I was worried about getting shot going in there. Cause you know, she, you know, cause I'm yelling yeah. for her, you know, and right everything in the house was packed floor to ceiling with like 
walkways that were not quite as wide as my shoulder. They were probably wide enough for her, you know. And then she'd have a little alcove where she'd have a table and a chair and a light, yeah. you know, and then she'd go down this other tunnel. And I found her back in her room. She was fine, but it was like, it was, I've never forgotten that moment. I mean, you know, that's been. She was a, alive? Huh? She was alive. She was she fine. Was, yeah. She had her door open? Oh my yeah. gosh. The back door was open. Probably didn't know it because, you know, you had to go through a, you know, a, a habit trail to find it. So, you know. <laughs> So, but anyway, but it was, I'll never forget that moment. It was like, I had no idea well, that such things happened. And Yeah. That'd be a shocker. Yeah. So I, I, go, so I go, how do you sleep at night? Because there's no place to sleep. The bed is covered and they have etched out a small space of a couple of cushions on the sofa and not in the full three, three sections. And that's where they sleep. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's an interesting experience. We we've done you know several hoarder cleanouts, um, and some of them are pretty intense. And then, but we've done um, we did one for the hoarder herself, which was an unusual, you know, that uh, adds an extra dynamic to it, you know. And she was right. she was an orderly hoarder, if that makes any sense. Everything was in boxes, but the boxes were literally stacked floor to ceiling in every room with just little walkways. And right. she wanted us to go through all those to make sure that we didn't. And so it was an expensive proposition because we were there for weeks digging through with big teams, yeah. digging through every box. Yeah. But um, but we got her downsized. We got her into her, her assisted living. You know, we were able to sell a lot of the stuff off. So it took some of the damage from a cost standpoint. But I mean, her kids were, they were overwhelmed. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what I would have felt like if I walked in there, you know. Yeah. So I don't work with hoarders now unless they have a therapist, they're on medication, and there's a good understanding because they're so hard to work with. Right. Like they wouldn't let us touch dusty old open envelopes or empty. Right. I get it. Yeah. So, you know, it's normally when we're doing it, it's we're dealing with, a, we're working with a guardian or attorney or, or, or what have you. But, you know, but one time we worked for the client herself because she was in a desperate situation. Her kids, I think it was because of the hoarding or whatever, there was an estrangement there, you know, and then she had to get into this thing. She had to get her house sold. She could, so she could afford to be where she had to go. So it was like, we have to get this done. So it was a, it was a process, you know? So, so I do understand That's some true. of the, you know, the, the, the world that you live in as well. So, yeah. Well, tell me more about, tell people how to get your book and I'll put a link or, or, um, or, or you'll put the name of it or something for Amazon on how they can find it. On the on Amazon. on Amazon, calming your chaos. Calming your chaos. Yes, and I will send you two complimentary chapters: how to move and how to organize any kitchen, any size or configuration. And I'm open to talk with people English in English anywhere in, in the world. Excellent. Well, I will put I'll put your contact information and stuff on this video as we as thank we you. share it. And uh, thank you so much for sharing with us. This was great. So it's. Now almost uh, what uh, is it? Almost the five o'clock in your in your or four o'clock? Almost four o'clock my time. Yeah. Okay. Well, seven here. So I <laughs> will see you later. Right. Have a good evening. I love Thank talking you. with you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.